Welcome to the DELDOT training series on ADA compliance in the public right-of-way. This video describes the necessity of the department's request for practical exception documentation and the process and considerations involved when seeking approval for a practical exception on your project. Public entities are prohibited from discriminating against persons with disabilities on the basis of disability in their programs, activities, and services under Title II of the Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990, or more commonly referred to as the ADA. The regulatory authority to enforce the provisions of the ADA are contained primarily in Title 28, Part 35 of the Code of Federal Regulations from which the DELDOT Pass Manual was derived. Title 28, Part 35 outlines the requirements of state and local governments. It also establishes exceptions for when full compliance with the requirements is considered structurally impractical. 28 CFR Part 35.151A2I further requires a public entity demonstrate that achieving full compliance is structurally impractical in circumstances when the unique characteristics of a site prevent the incorporation of a required accessibility feature. The department has established a request for practical exception process, or commonly referred to as the RPE process, to document such locations. The RPE process is fully detailed in Chapter 6 of the DELDOT Pass Manual. Included in Chapter 6 of the Pass Manual are the potential RPE warrants, the RPE documentation requirements, and a discussion of the department's RPE development and approval process. Practical exceptions to the department's adopted accessibility standards may be considered when physical constraints are encountered or when public safety considerations or operational issues make compliance impractical. In all cases where compliance is not practical, compliance is required to the maximum extent practicable and must not result in a detriment to the usability or accessibility of the feature. All reasonable alternatives to provide convenient, continuous, and accessible pedestrian accommodations must be exhausted using sound engineering judgment before a request for an exception is to be created. For example, the site constraints at this location led to the proposed alternative to install a detectable warning surface along the depressed curb line improving the existing condition. This was the best available option within the practical project scope of work for the resurfacing project. The Department's Office of Civil Rights is tasked with overseeing the Department's RPE process and approving all individual RPEs. The Department's streamlined RPE process promotes consistency of practice across the Department establishes a check to ensure the department is following the requirements of the ADA, and enables a trackable procedure which will simplify any future ADA investigations. All RPEs are to be prepared by or under the direct supervision of the engineer of record. The Office of Civil Rights can be used as a resource during the RPE development process to ensure timely reviews and approvals. RPEs serve as a permanent record of the department's decision-making process to provide reasonable accommodations at specific locations. For that reason, RPEs must document site-specific challenges, state how the proposed improvements benefit accessibility, and be written in a way that a reader with limited knowledge of the location can come to the same reasonable conclusion. The department created a request for practical exception RPE, cover sheet, and executive summary standard form to aid practitioners in the RPE development process. This standard form prompts the practitioner for the minimum information the department determined necessary to document non-compliant locations. It is important to stick to the facts and provide supporting documentation. All RPEs submitted must be site-specific to the conditions and constraints encountered at the location in question. An RPE cannot be applied as a blanket approval on a project-wide or program-wide basis. For example, the department will not grant a blanket project-wide exception for a paven rehab or similar scoped project, 
Exceptions to the accessibility standards will only be provided for individual locations on the project which have been analyzed and deemed to be structurally infeasible. Cite the standards from the DELDOT Pass Manual used during the evaluation process. When applicable, the RPE documentation should also provide consideration for a no-build alternative. A no-build alternative may be appropriate where the current configuration of the accessibility feature offers the maximum amount of usability given the site's constraints, and include tables, charts, and pictures to support the request. A project's accessibility requirements should be analyzed as soon as feasible during the project development process to identify, mitigate, and to ultimately document locations where the applicable accessibility standard cannot be met within the scope of a project. It is the department's goal that all RPE locations be submitted to the department's Office of Civil Rights by the semifinal plan submission milestone. Contracts at this stage will have sufficiently defined scopes and grades developed to fully identify the locations that require an RPE. When an RPE is granted, the location of the non-compliant accessibility facility and non-compliant element must be clearly documented in the contract documents. Additionally, all approved RPEs must be provided to the engineering support section ahead of the ADA inspection to ensure that an accurate inspection is performed. Though it is the goal of the department to have all necessary RPEs processed during the design phase, there may be occasions where an RPE may need to be processed after the design phase. The department provides detailed procedures for obtaining RPEs that are processed outside of the design phase in Chapter 6 of the PASS Manual. Like design phase RPEs, RPEs that are processed during the construction phase are to be prepared by or under the direct supervision of the engineer of record so that the engineer of record's design intent can be incorporated into the documentation. The RPE review checklist, available on DELDOT's Design Resource Center, may be helpful to those preparing an RPE request to know how the request will be evaluated. We hope you found this video helpful in defining the department's RPE process. Please consult with DELDOT's Civil Rights section for more information.